Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwentage as we are going to look at the new cards in the Way of the Witcher expansion in Gwent. And today we're going to be talking about the monster cards that have been introduced. So the expansion added 10 cards for each faction and throughout this small video series we'll go over all the new cards and discuss them. This is going to be the starting point of the discussion. So I'm going to give my opinion on the cards and then we can continue this conversation down below in the comment section so don't hesitate to leave your thoughts on these new cards right there let's head into the cards so there they are the 10 cards for the monsters faction that have been added in this expansion and i gotta say the artwork of these cards especially for monsters is very very colorful just from a small glance if you look at the screen right now they're very very colorful very evocative of yeah pure monsters there's all of these cards actually fit the archetype very, very well. So let's go through these one by one, starting from the bottom, going all the way up to the top card of this series. So first up, we have the hybrid, if the game wants to help me out here. And the hybrid is a four provision unit with four power that whenever you consume one or more units, boost yourself by one. So similar to the Vran Warriors, um, although it requires a consume instead of just a destroyed unit. So um, very standard like engine type card for monsters. Especially since there's a lot of consuming that has been added in the uh, faction overall. Uh, not much else to talk about. Incredible art as always, like a split off werewolf. But uh, yeah, that's the four provision card. Nothing too fancy, of course. Next up, we have the Fuka. I think you have to pronounce that. Is um, an Ogroid. So basically, I think it's a bigger type of necker. Yeah, a rare kind of necker known as Fokas. If you see one, run. Um, this one has Veil and Drive, like most of the neckers have, but this one is very special because units played by your opponent also trigger this unit's Drive ability. So if you play that against um, like for example another monster deck that also plays high powered units you'll get those drive ticks going up from your opponent's units as well. I think it's going to be limited the use of this card it's a very colorful piece of art which is incredible but I think the use for this card is going to be limited because um, it starts at four already so the amount of drive that it's going to get from your opponent is going to be limited because um, your opponent needs to play a five power unit at the very least to just get one extra point of drive off of that. But if you go higher, I don't think this it'll happen too much that you'll uh, get triggered from your opponent, unless you're also facing a monster deck. Um, but yeah, it's a nice, very colorful addition. Then we have the succubus. That is a lot more interesting. I have the premium variant already, um, which is... There's some really weird noises going on in the background. I don't know what that was supposed to be, but that was very interesting. I never heard that sound effect before. But the succubus, um, that wish. At the end of your turn, summon a different copy of the succubus from your graveyard to a random row and give it doomed. And then we get the introduction of adrenaline. Um, adrenaline, is a, a, adrenaline is a new mechanic, a new keyword in Gwent that triggers that ability depending on the amount of cards you still have in your hand when you play this card. Um, or when the ability needs to activate in this case. So Adrenaline 3 will trigger when you have three or less cards in your hand. Um, and with the Succubus here, you don't get the Doom Tag on the Succubus you get back from the graveyard when you actually have three cards or less in your hand. So it does give you a nice cycle um, when you actually get to the points that you have adrenaline because that means that every turn you can basically do the same thing that you do with ruin um, you can destroy a succubus if you have already one in the graveyard that one gets pulled out swapped in from the for the one you just destroyed it doesn't get doomed so you can destroy that one again and it will pull the previous one back out from the graveyard and then those last four turns you just get this cycle of four points going back into your into play automatically which is really really cool especially for a five provision cost uh, card then we have the Chimera, basically another five point consume unit like the Barguest and the Seleno Harpy, but 
Um, at Adrenaline 4, so if you have five cards in your hand and you play this one, you also boost all the copies of the consumed unit in that unit's row by one. So for example, if you have a row of rats or a row of um, Andrega drones, um, you actually get, all those are boosted by one. So for example, if you have eight rats on the row and you still have, um, you don't, you, you can't even have nine, one, nine, right? Is it's consume an allied unit and consume units in that unit's row by one. So if you have nine on a row, destroy one of those rats with the consume ability and those eight other rats get boosted. So that's basically um, a 13 point play for a five point provision card, which is very, very strong, of course, if you have all the tokens, but can help you out in getting rid of all of those. And I think it's a very strong card that might be underestimated at the moment. Um, but then, the next one, Spontaneous Evolution, another one I have the premium card for already, is an organic special card that you can use to boost an allied unit by four, and then you get an extra effect based on the type of unit you actually boosted. So if you boosted an insectoid, you get three extra drones on the field, so those, uh, I think, are those supposed to be, those are Andrega, right? Yeah, so um, those drones. Um, on that boost unit's row, so right next to it, perfect for the insectoid archetype. If it's a beast, you can boost that unit by 8 instead, so again, 8 points on a 5 revision card, um, which is the same for the insectoid, no, an insectoid is 7. Um, but then the ogroid gives all ogroids in your hands to armor. I don't know what the consequences of that might be. There's a few that might benefit from this, but I think it's the least powerful effect right now. Because um, there's nothing that really uh, benefits from that, aside from maybe you can um, maybe armor up your Neckers before you play them. But even that, it's only one of the two Neckers. Um, so I don't see the option there just yet. But if you do, let me know in the comment section down below. And then the next one is, I think, one of my favorite cards of this new expansion, the Were Rat from uh, last year's Year of the Were Rat. Um, it's a beast, again, because most of these are beasts. Uh, aside from the ones that we're going to be seeing next. But order, reset this unit's power and spawn a number of rats in this row equal to the amount of boosts it lost. It has a cooldown of one, so you can use this order ability every turn. And at the end of your turn, you consume automatically the unit to the right. Which means that the were rat basically has a deploy consume ability if you put it next to the unit you want to have destroyed so that works fine and then in the next turn you can transform the boosts you got from the unit you destroyed into rats rats that that, that you can then use as tokens to destroy as well uh, with some of the other cards that we just talked about for example the chimera from before but there's a few other cards that actually benefit from this a lot it's a very cool other engine cards and monsters because monsters basically were lacking a bit in the engine department. And this is a really, really cool one. I'm experimenting with this one at the moment. And I feel like I have a good grasp of what you can do with it. Uh, aside from the fact that it's, of course, automatic consumes, that is also very, very powerful. But on to the next one. We're starting to get into the bigger units. Uh, the Eider, I think they're supposed to pronounce that, is a very, very creepy uh, worm type of monstrosity. I don't want to find that in or under my bed but order adrenaline trace so you can use this order ability only if you have three cards or less in your hand consume all tokens on this row so that harkens back to the rats that we talked about and gain immunity it already has seven power seven points as a base power um, but it also have a has a passive ability that whenever you consume one or more units spawn a drone in this row that effect is, I think, irrelevant from the Adrenaline, so you can play the either very early, have it just passively generate drones, and then at a certain point say, okay, I want to clear that entire row, use the order ability, consume all the tokens, and make this either immune as well. So very, very powerful card if you can keep it alive, of course, which is, well, valid for almost every card. Um, but yeah, really cool piece of art, really creepy piece of art. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go into the next card because they only get wilder from here. Next up is one of the new locations. So every faction got one of these. It's a resilient artifact. So that means that it stays on the board between uh, the round you played and the next round, not until the, the round after that. 
but they all have a deployability basically allowing you to play all the new bronze cards that's basically the common theme here and then an order ability that does something else so on deploy you can spawn a succubus a foca a chimera or a hybrid so those four bronze cards that we just talked about and then on order so starting from the next turn you can choose to move the highest power unit to the top of your deck and spawn a drone on both sides of this card it is pretty good so basically if you don't even count moving the highest power unit to the top of your deck you get around seven provisions worth of uh, points here but that moving the highest power unit to the top of your deck is really interesting it synergizes with uh Imlerit most uh most of all so if you use all do locks ability the order ability and then play Imlerit, you are certain that you will be pulling the highest power unit in your deck from your deck when you play Imlerit. Um, and then the drones are just a nice extra i think this one would benefit the most from you playing a succubus um of course keeping in mind that you should have two other succubuses as well to make this work but the chimera is also a good option if you uh, if you want to use that especially if you have a lot of tokens on the field but that is the first of the location cards we'll be talking about the other ones in their respective videos next up another very very creepy big spider creature so we have the koshe kosh koshche i think it's koshche you can, you can, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Koshche. Uh, four power, three armor, and Thrive, which is basically a humongous Andrega larva, um, ability-wise. But whenever this unit's Thrive is triggered, you also spawn a drone in this row. It is a peculiar card. It basically doubles up on your Thrive, so every time you trigger Thrive, you get uh, one power point from the Thrive and then a one, another point from the Drone. Starting from Adrenaline 4, so if you have five cards in your hand and you play that fifth card, causing you to have four cards or less, you spawn an Andrega Larva in this row instead. So meaning that you get another Thrive unit in one go. I think this can escalate a lot quicker than people think. I saw a lot of uh, people reacting to this like, oh, uh, I don't think it will be worth the investment cost. But remember that you could trigger this ability multiple times in the same um, in the same turn. So for example, you could play Oberon, the final stage of Oberon into an NL Conqueror which means you have a 5 and a 6 provision uh, card there, uh, seven, a 7 power card there, triggering drive twice, especially if you do that by the, the point that you get adrenaline, um, that's drive twice, and then you could, if you go with the leader ability where you play the Woodland Spirit, that's another drive in the same turn. So that basically brings this to 7 power with 3 and Drega Larva on top of it, which is, I think, a lot. This can be very powerful if you play it right, but it's not fitting into the, um, the, the other insectoid archetype of just spawning drones. I don't think it's its primary function. The Andrega larva here are the primary function because you're going to get a lot of value of those drives even if it happens this late in the round. Um, you're only getting one Andrega larva, not the two from the original card, but still, this is going to be a very powerful engine if played correctly. And then the final one, I think we're already at the final one, yeah. Um, if you've play, been playing on Pro, uh, you might have seen this card a lot already, but it needs a bit of an explanation. It's an incredibly cool looking card. If you look at it precisely, you can see like Elven Ruins underneath it, giving it a humongous scale. This beast is huge, uh, which is, I, I really like that. I talked about that in a previous video, where the artists really like to play with scale. And it doesn't look like it at first glance, but this beast is huge. But the V, the V is an insectoid, perfectly fine. But as a Death Wish ability, it starts at 8 power. As a Death Wish ability, it shuffles V back to your deck, then increase its base power by 3. This is an effect that we haven't seen properly since um, Homecoming. Um, because this is basically strengthening. If you haven't played uh, Gwenta the beta, Strengthening was upping your base power permanently. So this means that the first time you destroy V, it gets shuffled back into the deck and it will have 11 base power. Pull it back out, play it, destroy it again, 
and you get a 14 base power V and so on and so forth. You can, as long as you can keep pulling it out of your deck again with um, Imrift or maybe even the, uh, we just saw that location that puts the highest power unit on top of your deck. You can then use Imrift. You can use um, the, um, the Wild Hunt ship. Um, kind of forgot the name for a second. Um, you can use Oneiromancy, you can use, um, what I've been using in my deck was uh, Alzu's Double Cross, because it's going to be the highest power unit in your deck, you can play that as well. So there's plenty of ways of pulling it back, and if you combine that with, like, copying it with Kyantir as well, this is a huge card. It's a, the reason why you keep seeing it and pro at the moment. At first glance, this is one of the most powerful cards ever introduced in Monsters, because it just keeps going and it keeps growing to immense heights. So if you can pull this off like three times on the same unit, you pull a 17 power V out of your deck um, in one go. Aside from, of course, all the value you've got from consuming it in the first place, if you have a few other cards that benefit from that. So V, very, very powerful card. And that is basically the final monster cards that has been introduced. Um, all of the factions have one of those very powerful, like 12 provision cards. Um, and most of them are witches, but that's why I wanted to start with the monsters deck. Um, because they have these really, really cool... Yeah, they really up the scales with this one. The, the scale of the monsters is huge. Uh, and I really, really like the new art style as well. So uh, that's it for this video. Um, let's talk further about these cards in the comment section because they're really, really cool. I'm building a few decks. As you can see, there's a, the Worm Food deck over there. Uh, on the left, I've been working on that. Um, and there's a few other decks that I, I want to work about on as well. So check out those deck guides when they come out. Uh, I'm going to do a video like this on every single faction. So if you watch this video... Um, right after it's released, you won't see the other ones just yet. I'm gonna try to release one every day, every two days. Um, but if you're you join in later, you can check those out immediately. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Grand Edge. Goodbye. Yeah,